so much for doing that. Okay, back in open session. Um, we have a request from Brenda for some disposal of property. Um, do you want to elaborate or just the old phones? We're just, uh, we're just getting, we got new phones with that phone system. Mm -hmm. They brought us new phones and reduced our price. Um, our new line boards have now taken the place of some old Promethean smart boards. And uh, there are some old projectors that are replaced by the new line boards as well. So she's just seeking permission to uh, liquidate those items. Okay. If they have any value, we'll try to pedal them. If they don't, we'll dispose of them. Okay. Sounds good. Okay. I still move. Okay. Second. Okay, motion by Gina, seconded by David, that the USD 298 Board of Education approve the disposal of the following property, old phones, old projectors, and old Promethean boards. Any other discussion? All in favor? Opposed? Motion carried. Five okay, next we have some KASB policy updates. Uh, I will make a mention here if you want to not move on this. I apologize. I did not make copies for you of this. I haven't read this. Uh, I thought I would have it done, and I don't have it done. If you want to push it till next January, month. okay, till we have time to review it and for you to get copies. Okay. Uh, table that. Uh, number 10, uh, the 2022-2023 calendar committee report. Well, I'm excited to share with you some of the thoughts and concepts that went into the calendar that's in front of you. Uh, staff was surveyed, calendar committee, people chatted in person or via email numerous different times. And what they are proposing is that we have a later start date and we go later in the year. You'll notice the not big... Too later, though. Pardon? It's not too much later. No. It's the right. big kick here, and it's kind of, there's a lot of districts that have moved to this right now, is you'll notice the week of Thanksgiving is a week off. Uh, we're making up time. You'll notice also there aren't as many uh, professional development days because we have Wednesday early release where we're taking care of a lot of business that takes typically takes place on those uh, development days. The student days are increasing by 0.5. Uh, I wanted to increase it more. I think that's what we're here for is to continue to teach kids. Uh, but 0.5, we can walk into this thing. I will say that the teacher contract days are reduced by 4 to 180 on this calendar. And my recommendation would be that the calendar in the negotiated agreement be negotiated to state something to the effect of a maximum of 184 days, but accepted calendar days are what applies to the year. It's my recommendation we don't give up calendar days and then have to negotiate them back in. We currently have those set. This gives us some flexibility. We can't go beyond it without negotiating through, but we can go under it. But I, we need to guarantee a level of expectation and then we can go back and forth as the calendar so dictates. I think it looks good. The word in our negotiated agreement. I think we can call on that. And we're still going to do the early release on Wednesdays. It doesn't matter. As long as we've got a current one in there. I 
It says it will consist of the days in the approved yearly calendar. A minimum of three uh, professional employee work days. The contract duty year consists of contacts. It shall be inclusive of a minimum of three work days and a minimum of three in-service days. And there's, is there three work days, one, two? Mm -hmm. Yep. Mm -hmm. Very good. So, I, we, we, of the approved yearly calendar. The PD days are August, November, and February. And then work days, there's two in August. And... each count for a half day, plus two purples, which are two more days. So we meet the number of PD days and we exceed the number of work days on this calendar. I think it looks good. It doesn't look like we're really going all that much longer. This is a year by year thing, but I think the board needs to maintain 184 contract day expectation. Actual calendar work days may vary according to the accepted calendar. tonight if, if we want to get some more clarification on language to secure 184 days that's fine but in your motion you should be able to have that as the expectation we accept this calendar with the understanding that it's an expected contract of 184 days however pursuant to this contract for this time we will adopt this calendar There's my, it looks what he said. Yeah. <laughs> okay. Or I can get some legalese paragraph if that would be better. There's no super rush on this. You know, it's just to get it out there and get it set. Yes. So yeah. People yeah. understand what we're going to do with last month and we pushed mm -hmm. it to this month. So what I like is the, the just the creativity and the the way the committee worked together to brainstorm. This is about what admin, this is about the fourth fourth version as we just talked and massaged and talked and massaged. And, and there was two actual meetings and then numerous emails. And in the years I've been here, it's I think the most collaborative calendar we've had between the committee and admin. Okay. I like it, it looks good.
incentive for early retirement notification? Well, as we all know, finding teachers is becoming the new challenge. I would like to propose to you an incentive for retirement notification by January 15. If, if a teacher gives us notice that they are intending to retire by January 15, that we cover the cost for six months of their health care after their group coverage with the district would expire. That would be at our level C single pay, $356.87 times six. And the reason for this is we have job fairs coming up, college job fairs. The earlier the notice that we can have, the better our odds of finding staff. So I see this as a, a minimal expense for the ability to be in a position to react. Did it jump on? Well, we've been essential to them as well. 24, well, it would be yeah, very beneficial be to them to continue health care. Yeah, that's a tough thing. I like it. Now, you know, our employees have the option of staying on our mm -hmm. health care, but they wouldn't have, they have to pay that premium out of pocket. This would do, defer that for six months before they had to uh, pay a, a premium if they chose to stay on our plan. It's a long time. Yes. Yes, this is for this year, and then we just have to kind of see where the job market is. And, and you look at some openings, it's, it's kind of mind-boggling right now how many openings are posted in different areas on KansasTeachingJobs.com. And that's for the three hundred dollars incentive for early notification. Right. That's just cash. And then right out there for early retirement. Right, and the sunset on the early retirement program. Mm -hmm. And this is just a, an additional incentive for this year, so that we can see just where we're going. Just let us know a little sooner. Or are we going to February 15th? Yeah. Mm -hmm. We'll be compensated $300. And I don't know how long it's been $300, and I don't want to sound snide or unappreciative, but in this day and age, that's, that's not... Not much. That's not what really sends people running to the gate, $300. So I think, you know, valuing that notification in, in kind of a greater way, I think, makes sense. That would still apply. Mm -hmm. Don't let me, our district, just pull with this. Okay. Let's bring Charles' recommendation. I'll second. Okay. Thank you, David. Thank you. We have a motion by David, seconded by Deb that the USD 298 Board of Education approve a one-time early notice incentive for early retirement for certified staff. This notice must be made by January 15th, 2022 from the eligible certified staff member and will equal six months of a single health insurance premium at option C upon the expiration of regular USD 298 Lincoln Group health insurance plan year benefits. Any other discussion? Clear enough. All in favor? Opposed? Five votes. Okay. Um, next we have INA alert camera um, door security. We've been talking with them about cameras and stuff. INA Alert is the company that we bought our camera servers from and our new camera security software from. And I think I'm not the only one admin team. It is a, the, the camera functionality right now and the ability to see 
past footage and current footage is so much more user friendly than what we used to have. Absolutely. Uh, uh, and, it, yes. and it came from INA Alert. So both buildings have some needs, but right now we have a lot of blind spots at the junior senior high school. So um, you did that walkabout, didn't you? Yes. So Nikki and myself and a designer from INA Alert walked around the building and we just mapped out where we could move existing cameras and where we could where we would need to put new cameras to take care of our blind spots. Um, you know, I don't want to sound arrogant, but the bid is low enough that I can approve this under my authority of spending, but I just wanted everybody to be on the same page and see what you think. To do this camera upgrade at the uh, Junior senior high school is $9,800. Although my ESSER funds are starting to see the light at the end, well, not the light at the end of the tunnel, at the end of the tunnel, this is, believe it or not, still qualifying for ESSER spending under contact tracing and exposure monitoring. So a lot of things that I'm getting right now. I'm having Emily and Nancy flag, and they've started a spreadsheet called Possible ESSER Expenses, Additional Curriculum At-Risk Items for Remediation. So as I put in applications for this ESSER 3 and we finalize ESSER 2, I get an application together and I can ask them, what's on the list that I can, can I throw more on this, or are we going to have the funds? This is something that, that is qualifying right now from the district. The other thing at those at that building, and again, this is a phase in thing because both buildings have needs, is the uh, security, the door security system. We currently uh, use FileSafe as our service company. Right. They're very expensive. They charge a hundred and ninety-four dollar one-way trip charge from Salina. INA Alert could put all of our systems into the same box, if you will, and service them as well. Uh, I'm trying to find the name of that because it's hard to pronounce. Avigalon. Avigalon is the camera system. They also can do the door security systems as well, the badge swipes. Um, the, the interface needs some modification from what it currently is, but again, the user-friendly aspect of programming the doors, which we do all the time for events and different things. That is, the door project is a, another $9,900, $9,920,37. And again, it's within my spending authority, but I just want you to know where money's going. These are upgrades that, unfortunately, to maintain facilities, much like the parking lot, if you don't take care of it, you get to a point where it's going to be a major endeavor. So I've worked with this, this guy, and we've talked a lot on the phone. I've been impressed with the company so far with what they were able to do with just our cameras that are existing. And I saved us a lot of money in capital outlay last year. I can pull this out of capital outlay. Um, I would recommend, if, if it were just my simply my decision, which it kind of is, but I want you to be informed, I would go ahead and get these upgrades started for that building. Okay. And then if you can get it paid for by ESSER, you will. If I can get the camera part of it, it will go on my ESSER wish list as we work through things. So then that would all be updated, I mean, correct? Cutting edge. The high school would be. Yeah. Yeah. The high school yeah. Okay. <laughs> then possibly next year we'll see how the year ends up and what we can roll back over into capital out the end of year and then we can address phasing things in like that. We have blind spots in some places that just aren't really covered well at the elementary school, mostly on the outside. Uh, but but everything is just in need of upgrade. We just have to eat this elephant one bite at a time. Okay. As technology increases, those mm -hmm. abilities increase. Okay. So with, with
Would that total bid be those two numbers added together? It would be. Is that what we want? But they are separate bids because they're <coughs> two separate systems. Okay. So one is for the door security systems and the other is for current and additional cameras. That's door security. Okay. by Deb, seconded by Gina, that the USD 1098 Board of Education approve the bid of $9,829.20 from INA Alert for the conversion of current cameras and additional cameras, and also approve the bid of $9,920.37 for an upgrade of the door security systems through Avigalon Systems. Any other discussion? All in favor? Opposed? Motion carried. 5-0. Okay. Uh, we have principal's report. Uh, packet. Uh, anything you want to add, Denise? Um, I just quickly have to add with our early shutdown, and I think I, I mentioned this the other day, but we will move our winter concert to Wednesday, January, January the 12th, and that will start at 6 p.m., and we'll stagger the grades, and that information will go home to parents as well. It's already also been posted on our live feed and our Facebook page, and then our movie reward day moves to January the 7th. That's a Friday. Okay. We would like to pass that along. The winter program that was scheduled for this Friday the 17th has been moved to January 12th. Yes. Is there a time? Um, K2 students start from 6 to 6.45. There's a 15 minute overlap and then 3-5 students start from 7 to 7.45. Okay, starting at 6 and then progressing. If you would look at our Facebook page, that will give you all the timeline on that. And then on January 7th, a Friday, the movie reward for reading has yes. been moved. Um, that'll be at the Finch Theater, so if you send back permission slips, your kids will still get their reward for that. That'll be January 7th of Friday. Okay, thank you. Um, just a couple things to add. We will extend our semester week, the week we come back, um, and that is just to give the opportunity to the kids that need to take finals to get their grades up. Um, the kids that have earned that they, their final exams won't have to take them. Um, we'll find something else for them to do, but we just want to make sure we give those kids that are borderline the opportunity to still take their finals since that was taken away from them. Um, they'll have that first couple days of study, the teachers will review, and then we'll come up with a plan for that Thursday, Friday. Um, the second thing that's in my, my board report, on our November uh, 11th, in service day, we had um, the faculty at LJSHS spent quite a bit of time just discussing some issues that we've had um, with students and uh, discipline, uh, really with cell phones. And the staff has kind of requested that I put together some sort of cell phone policy, which I've included in my board packet. So we are going to implement that in January. Um, it was a great demand, basically, of our staff um, that they did it. So I do have a, a better visual for you. It's, the pictures are kind of crazy, so I apologize. But basically what it shows is um, these were uh, basically uh, teachers did a kind of a study in their classrooms for one hour and how often their kids' cell phones went off. And so you can see two different visuals there at the top. Um, just how many times they got texts in one hour, well it was 30 minute period, how much social media went off, and then any other things. And then the second one shows it's more detailed, email, Snapchat, Facebook, text messages, phone calls, Instagram. And in that cell phone policy that I gave you, I, I included some statistics on the second page. Um, I probably have spent the last 
I don't know, two or three weeks just researching cell phone distraction in a classroom and how much it um, impacts student learning. Um, we have had one teacher who already took cell phones out of their classroom, and what they did is they had, um, they're kind of like shoe pockets, calculator pockets. When they come in, they have to put them in, and when they started this process, um, every kid's grade went up after they did this. So it's, it's, pro it's at the point where it's something that we have to do. Those cell phones are definitely a, can be a learning tool in the way of life today. Uh, there are just too many kids that cannot control the uh, temptation to check it every time it buzzes on their table or in their pocket. So um, I think one of the staggering statistics from this is that it takes 23 minutes at, um, to refocus every time your phone goes off. And on average, a kid's phone goes off every five minutes. They're never focused. So this is the baby steps. There was discussion about the pouches with our staff about buying the pouches. Um, I just don't want to invest in that kind of money yet if, we can, if this process will work. So what we did, I think we had to buy 12 of those pockets, calculator pockets for the classrooms. Um, they cost about 12 bucks, so we're in $150. Um, and if that works, then this will be fantastic. Um, I'll be sending a, a video home um, over break for the parents just to give them a warning because if they kids have them, they're going to have to come pick them up. That's kind of part of the, the punishment. Um, there are some other things that we have. Um, we've had some issues with um, bathroom problems, and it had to do with cell phones. Probably 80% is I went back through my discipline referrals, and about 80% of them had to do with phones. Whether it was bullying, um, inappropriate pictures on the phones, um, Snapchat groups, um, just not, they're just not, they're not, they're not a educational tool right now. So uh, this is the, we're going to try this and see if it works, and if it doesn't, we'll try something else. So uh, we're going to implement that in January when we come back. I was hoping to tell the kids before they left, but I guess we'll have a meeting when we come back. few other things. We've had some issues in the locker room. We've kind of implemented that. That's changed. We've had some issues with bathrooms, so we've kind of done that. So there'll be kind of a slew of new rules that we're going to try and implement and, and make it a better learning environment. So. That's good. Any other comments? Okay. Thank you, guys. Received our new and updated wind tower check of $127,000, which should continue for the next five years after this one. So, if you remember our work, our work day meeting at the high school, we had talked about phasing some of that money into some of our needed capital improvements that really we can't particularly find in general fund right now. So I would like to move ahead on getting bids for those south facing windows that we talked about. I got one bid for $35,000. I've got another company that I've reached out to um, that's out of Fort Scott. I don't know if they'll come this far, but I'd like to go through the uh, request for proposal process um, and then bring to you some bids for approval. I don't know if you necessarily have to approve me getting bids. Do they let them? They can let them. They can let them. Okay. Um, I'd also like to start uh, working with some companies on that high school parking lot so that we're good to go the day after school's out. Somebody is ready to come in and fix that issue. So those are a couple things coming up. It would give you a HVAC update on the gymnasium. The units are scheduled to be delivered by the end of this month. The pads are poured. They're running electrical lines to it right now. And duct work is being uh, fabricated out of the shop. And some of it is already installed in the metal shop. And we're already getting that duct work. Hangers are up there ready to uh, put the duct work on. So we're moving along there. 
we do have the north direct fire unit shut down uh, completely because they put the new ductwork in. Uh, it's not extremely comfortable with one direct fire, but nobody's going to get frostburn. It's warmer than my house, I'll tell you that. But I think the last game it got into the mid 60s on the north side of the gym. But uh, the south one is is providing all heat to that uh, part of the facility right now. But it'll be fine. It'll be fine. Um, you know, I was kind of excited about an idea of moving to LED lights and saving electricity given what our usage was. Yes. So the company out of Oklahoma, Oklahoma LED, was here last week and they did a last week and they did a complete audit of every light fixture and every light bulb in every building that USD 298 owns. I'm waiting on those results, but let me show you something exciting. Have you noticed a decrease in light right here where we're sitting? It's dark. It's dark. So previous to this meeting, we had 16 light bulbs up there. 16 fluorescent T8 light bulbs pulling 32 watts of energy each. So we had 128 watts per fixture times four fixtures, 512 watts. There are currently two LED hybrid bulbs in each fixture for a total of eight bulbs. So eight bulbs replaced 16 and 104 watts of energy replaced 512 watts of energy. And other than John, nobody is noticing the darkness of it. <laughs> so this is the kind of things that I think we need to continue moving towards. When we get that audit back, I can go through and cut out all the fluff. What I really want to do is just buy stinking light bulbs and replace them. I don't need anything fancier than that. But if we can reduce our fluorescent light usage by that much, we might be able to see some significant savings in electricity. Another thing that we have to do is we have to get much more diligent on lights being on district-wide. Um, when we're talking about $10,000 a month plus in utility bills, everybody's going to have to pitch in if this is going to work. Now, you might be able to leave them on for a little bit with LED and we'll still be okay. But I don't know that we can go the entire expensive motion sensor on offs in a classroom in, in very up-to-date and new schools that's what they're putting in so if there's nothing moves for five minutes the lights go out um, that would be nice but I don't think we're in a position to do that I think this is a quick win and when I start getting prices together I'll share those with you the results of that audit so that to me was exciting and I like that we can go down to two bulbs and doesn't affect it in one bit. Five year warranty on the bulbs. That's all I got. Yeah, no exciting place in the house. Motion by Patty, seconded by Gina. Motion by Patty, seconded by Gina, that the USD 298 Board of Education go into executive session at 8.16 p.m. for 15 minutes with the superintendent and principal Nikki Flynn for the purpose of discussing matters adversely or favorably affecting a student or students, and that the board return to open meeting at 8.31 in the Board of Education conference room. The executive session is required to protect the privacy interests of student or students who is identifiable under COMA. Any discussion? All in favor? 